One person. There you go. Come on now. One year. Faster, faster, faster. One amazing transformation. My name's Chris Powell, and this is what I do. Push, I want to see you push yourself. I don't see it. Okay, the that's an thing. Get up off the ground and keep going. I can't freaking do it. Ready, three, two, one, go. It's time to wake up. Time to start living. <laughs> what you're about to see will be the most important year in one person's life. Don't listen to your body, listen to me. Come on, push. Who are you? You can choose to die. Something tells me you want more. Tonight on Extreme Weight Loss, meet Jamie, an adopted child who has always dreamed of reconnecting with her birth mom. But shame over her weight holds her back. I feel worthless all the time. I don't want to meet her and feel this way. Luckily, Chris Powell is going to help her change her life. How bad do you want to love yourself? More than anything in the world. Time to explore how awesome you are. But Chris has never met anyone so broken. You can come back from that, right? He'll have to change his strategy. My job right now is going to be getting you to eat as many calories as I can and keeping you out of the gym. If she's even going to make it to her final weigh-in. This is totally an experiment for me. All leading up to an emotional reunion. 27 years in the making. No vamos a volver a abrazar. Are you, can you look ahead? Do you need me to? Well, no. <laughs> I have a really hard time looking at myself in the mirror. I liken it to like, you wouldn't stop to stare and admire a piece of trash, so why would I want to look in the mirror? Like, I already know I'm ugly, so I don't want to look at something that I know is disgusting. I would love to get healthy and have my psoriasis be cleared up. The heavier you are, the worse your psoriasis is. But I haven't done anything until now because I haven't felt like I mattered enough to do it. Like, I feel like I carry all my failure, so it's all right here. I wish this wasn't my body. My name is Jamie, I am 28 years old, and I am 165 pounds overweight. Can I sit with you? I am a residence director for an intensive ballet school. Making sure they get up in the morning and get over to school to dance. Um, I eat all of my meals with them to make sure that they're making healthy choices. Do you want to watch rehearsals later today? Yeah, no problem. I would love to. My kids are like the definition of active. They are working out six to seven hours a day. There is a lot of discussion about making sure that you take care of your body, which just seems really ironic to me that I can dispense that and not really accept that. My biggest hope is I would like to go back to school and get my doctorate. So that's like my big future goal. Um, I want to meet my mom. So I'm, uh, I was born in Santiago, Chile in 1983, and I was raised by my biological mom till I was two and a half. Um, she couldn't raise me anymore. Actually, we were homeless and living on the street, and so she went to a nun's home, and then she kind of realized that she couldn't do it anymore, and so she gave me up. Roxana, my mother in Chile, would lay with me every night and just tell me, like, I was going to another mother that was going to take care of me and love me and, you know, be my mom, but she would always be in my heart. Lynn adopted me when I was two, and um, we don't have a strong relationship. She has no interest in becoming a better person, and she's just not willing to open up about her own life. I think my mom being lesbians and not wanting the world to know, I think I lived in her shame and her guilt. So I struggled to understand like where some of her sadness came from, and I always thought it was me. 
no one ever told me that it wasn't my fault. I just always assumed that it was. So I started looking for my biological mom, I think as soon as there was a computer in the house because I never really felt like I fit in with my family. And so I was always looking for something that looked like me. My biological mother found me online several years ago and we've been communicating ever since, but we've never met in person. I don't want to meet her and feel this way. She really like did the best thing for me, like gave me the best life I could possibly have. And I want to thank her more than anything in this world. I want Roxana, my biological mother, to be able to wrap her arms all the way around me and just know in like a sigh of a hug that I'm okay. I'm here in Philadelphia at Jamie's Dance School where she's a resident advisor and she's kind of like a mom to probably 30 or 40 of these students and she spent her whole life giving to other people and well this year everything's going to change. So in the true nature and, and tradition of ballet I figured uh, I'd slip into a uh, slip into this thing and <laughs> hopefully she's got a sense of humor because this ain't pretty. Philadelphia and I squeezed into this thing to choose you for the transformation of your life. This is just the beginning. You're kidding. No. This is not real life right now. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. This okay. year is going to be full of surprises, but let me tell you, we have no time. Our flight leaves in a couple of hours. Okay. So we need to go home. you got to pack your bags. Oh Boot camp starts tomorrow. All right? What? <laughs> all right. So let me tell you, thank you all. experienced a surprise like that in, in, in my entire life, ever. <laughs> I wanted to know why me. It's really overwhelming. To put Jamie through a transformation, where she's in a place where she's comfortable and she's confident to meet her birth mother, I mean, it's a tall order. Well, here we are. What do you think? Are you ready? I am ready. I, I, I'm what, overwhelmed. What are, you, what are you worried about? What if I can't do it? Disappointing you is like worse than disappointing myself. For somebody like Jamie, who her self-esteem is so low, she has no value for herself. And then to be chosen for this process, she is so overwhelmed. She just keeps breaking down into tears. How you doing? Hey, I'm okay. When was the last time you even stepped on a skin? <laughs> um... Uh... A few years ago, um, and I didn't like the number I saw. It just was validating that I'm worthless, so wh why would you get back on again? Jamie is just, she is so broken. And, and when she walks out onto that scale, I'll be honest, inside I'm thinking, this is gonna be a tough journey.
how do you come back from that? We can come back from that, right? Coming up. I was so afraid of letting you down. I don't know if Jamie's going to make it through the year. I'm going to have to resign from my position. The problem I... is your plans become our problem. And later. Standing there waiting for my mom with the single most fear-inducing moment of my life. from that, we can come back from that, right? Yeah, you can. Okay. It's painful to like have to stare your own failures in the face and know that like you can't change it tomorrow. Like you're gonna have to put in a, a lot of more work to dig yourself out of your failure. How tall are you? I'm um, five or six. So five foot six and 292 pounds. In my experience, I've worked with a lot of people who are a lot heavier than that. Compared to some of the other transformations I've done, she doesn't have that far to go. But Jamie's transformation, it doesn't have to do with weight loss. It really has to do with her learning to love herself and her realizing and discovering how extraordinary and how strong she really is. I want to be powerful enough to change that number. You will. <laughs> well, you don't have to believe right now. Just believe in me and take my word for it when I say I believe in you. And after a while, you'll start to believe in yourself, okay? Okay. Every step away from 292 is the beginning of 291 or 290. Like little by little, I'm gonna make the changes that I need to make. So it was, uh, it was freeing because I knew that I was, it's the last time that I was gonna see it on the scale. Jamie? Hi. We uh, have your, some of your medical history here. Your skin condition can usually be taken care of with diet and exercise. Boot camp has officially begun. Uh, and in boot camp, she's going to be going through a series of medical exams just to make sure that she's ready for this process because it's going to be intense. And in addition, she's going to be meeting with Paulette, who's going to cover her whole nutrition schedule. For breakfast, you could have a high-fiber English muffin. That's one carb. Okay. A tablespoon of natural peanut butter on there and a half a banana. And then she's also gonna be working out with me. Welcome to my comfort zone. <laughs> okay. Right. How are you feeling? You don't look too comfortable <laughs> right now. I'm not. I, I'm, I'm really excited. I am, and I mean that genuinely, but I am so afraid of disappointing you and myself right now, and so I'm psyching myself out for that. I'm used to people breaking down and crying during a workout, but Jamie started crying before the workout. She can't even compose herself, honestly. I don't know if Jamie's gonna make it through the year. I was so afraid of letting you down. Stop. You have nothing to prove to me. You got that? Yes. I want to see you prove it to yourself. I know you want to lose this weight, and you want to see your mom, and you want her to see that you're doing okay. So what if I disappoint her today? What if? What are you so scared of? You, uh, you know, it's crazy. It's, you, you're so scared of something that's going to happen in the future. It keeps you from living right now. The future is waiting for you to live into it and create whatever you want from it. Am I hitting on something here? I don't want to do that anymore. Totally. Get over it. OK. Easier said than done. Yes. <laughs> so we're going to get over it just one day at a time. Yeah. Let's go. When it comes to transformation, and, and building Jamie back up, we're at ground zero. And this is gonna be done one small step at a time. The only thing that would ever disappoint me is if you quit. I'm not a quitter. I'm not a quitter. You ready? Um, okay. You all warmed up? Sure. Cool. And don't go anywhere. Grip the handles and push. I want you to make this this belt move. Push. Okay. Push. Push. And I want you to get it moving. Okay. Now push it. This is a sprint, Jamie. Go, go, go. I just thought like he's gonna rev me up, he's gonna make me run. And when he stopped the treadmill and was like, okay, sprint. 
I can't. There's no way I can move this belt without it being on. Breathe, breathe. Keep pushing now. Time to explore your body, Jamie. Time to explore how awesome you are. Suddenly, as I'm like sprinting, I'm proving to myself and to him that I can, even, even though I said I couldn't. Beautiful. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. Come on now. And so this is my opportunity. These are my minutes with Chris to, that matter. And so if I'm going to learn something about myself, I have to put myself through this to come out of it and show myself I can do it. How bad do you want to love yourself? To never worry about disappointing anybody because you value yourself enough. Come on, keep pushing. Three, two, one, rest. How bad do you want that freedom? A lot. More than anything in the world. It has consumed you for far too long. I'm definitely proud of myself. I think I really struggle to gauge my success, and I realize that I've never really lived in any of my success. And if you don't get to relish in your success, then you just live in your failure. How do you feel? Um, I feel like I'm at the beginning of a mountain, and it's going to be really hard. But I proved to myself that I can start taking steps. Yeah, the, those treadmill pushes, they, they were kind of weak. <laughs> were they? Do I need to go back? No, you're supposed to say, I don't care. <laughs> She spends so much time worrying about what everybody else thinks, what I'm going to think, what her mom's going to think, what her birth mother's going to think. If she just focuses on herself, everything else is going to fall into place. Well, are you ready to go home? Uh, <laughs> I am ready to go home. Um, I've, had, I've had a lot of time to think here. Um, I need to focus this year on me. So um, I'm going to leave my job. So I'm going to move back to Massachusetts and um, take care of me this year because I, I am worth that. Wow. That's, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm really surprised. When Jamie shares with me that her job at the dance studio, it wasn't right for her right now. I just thought, wow, there's that first spark where all of a sudden Jamie came first. If you're going to be moving, get settled in. Okay. And then I will come to you and we can help create that environment for success in your new home. Okay. So your initial weigh-in was 292 pounds. Your phase one goal in the next 90 days is going to be to lose 80 pounds. How does that sound? Uh, at this moment, it sounds impossible, but I'm up for the challenge of things that are impossible. To lose 80 pounds in 90 days? I mean, I'm doing the math really fast, and that's like a pound a day give or take a couple of bad days. So how does the human body do that? I don't know if you can actually do that. Ultimately, like, you learned a lot here, but I just want to make sure that you stay on track throughout this whole process. Fortunately, we actually have a lot of support in this as well. Our friends at Walmart are giving you this generous gift card <laughs> for all of your groceries and produce throughout the whole year. Yes, that's yours. I don't even know what to say. All right, I am so proud of you. Way to put your foot down. Yeah. On one hand, it terrifies me to think that Jamie's gonna go home by herself for a couple weeks. But on the other hand, she's going home to make these positive changes for herself. And to me, that's encouraging. She's finally thinking about herself. Coming up. Right now, I'm, I'm you know, living and dying by the scale. I know there's weeks where I was at 400. She's destroying her body. Jamie had healthier habits when she was obese. And later. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the new Jamie. See how she looks after one full year. Oh, okay. What can we do for you? I'm gonna cry already. I, um, I just got back from California and I had an amazing time. I, went, I thank you so much for allowing me to go and have that experience, but I'm gonna have to resign from my position and um, 
take the next step is to take care of myself. When exactly <sighs> is this happening? How soon? I need to like pack up and go in the next couple of days. <gasps> it's I it's know. just really uh, it's really short notice, and we're almost at the end of the school year. So it just puts us in a tough position to go, OK, fine, we lose our residence director. Uh, who's going to take care of the 38 kids there? It was never my intention to, to just leave you with a few days' notice. It's so and not certainly, you. But the I, problem is, your plans become our problem. OK, on with right. I think I realized that I need to put myself first because I'm trying to take care of myself. I can't listen to anybody else telling me that I should be here, or even that inside voice that tells me that I should stay and take care of the kids because I love them is not stronger than the voice that's saying, I need to go. Ugh. Love you a lot. Oh, bye, guys. I love you. Leaving my job behind is definitely like a weight being lifted off my shoulders in terms of anxiety and finally being able to just do it and pack up and feel like it was right for me to come home. We're only in the 90 days, the first 90 days, but I feel like I'm definitely coming home different than when I left. And so I feel like the new me is strong enough to take on anything that's going to get thrown my way. Even on Skype and Jamie Ryan, every time I talk to her, she's she's asking for more exercises. She's asking if I can increase her reps or, or her mileage on her runs. I just keep telling her to, to follow the program. I want to make sure that she's truly transforming, not just dropping pounds. I'm working out a lot, and I have not been eating uh, very much at all. Every Friday, when I should be resting, don't tell Chris. But I, ru I run, walk a half marathon because I feel like every time I do that, I'm a few steps closer to doing my final goal. So I already got like a seven miler in today and now I'm gonna go back to running, so. Today is my Nana's 90th birthday. So while well, the family's getting together. My grandmother is, like, I always say, like, she's the other P in my pod. Like, she's just, she's awesome. She's the woman that, like, I think of as having raised me, so. She was the one who got me off the bus and made dinner and often put me to bed, so. I love her. She's just the gentlest person you'll ever meet. And I think, um, for me, she's somebody who always had time for me, and I think that's something that I was missing growing up. My adoptive mom, Lynn, Unfortunately, she does live right next door to my grandmother, so I might run into her. Not on purpose. She won't look who's here, Jamie. Are you surprised, Graham? I am just surprised. Oh, bud. No crying. You can cry. My name is Lynn. I'm Jamie's mother. Actually, I'm her adoptive mother. I adopted her when she was two years old. Go make a plate, honey, if you can. I can't make a plate. Uh, There's nothing over there that I can eat. Lynn will take the responsibility as my mother, for sure. Lynn raised me until, until I went to college, but, like, I think my heart was never really nurtured. Excuse me. Yes. Forks and knives you were supposed to bring, there was none on the table here for us. Okay, they're out at other tables. Well... Is there enough for... I bought over 100. What she looked at as parenting was putting food on the table and a roof over your head, and but, like, I, I needed a parent that could show me that they loved me. There's Debbie. We are going to Marco. I love my grandmother, her mother, to death, and I will be there for her forever, but... You know, when I was in high school, my mom, my adopted mom, the only reason that she adopted me was so that she had somebody to take care of her when she got older. And I don't want to. I want to take care of me. Right now, I'm, I'm you know, living and dying by the scale. So it's sort of like every day, it's sort of like I, I want to see results. I think I'm supposed to, like, be noticing more changes than I really am, which just makes me feel sick to my stomach that I don't. Because it makes me feel like there's something wrong with me. 
Jamie let it slip she's been weighing herself. That's a huge red flag. I weigh people during the first 90 days just so I can check on their progress, but I don't necessarily want them to see the number. It's just, it's too much information, too much pressure. I really wish that I could look in the mirror and see somebody different than I saw, you know, weeks ago. Like, I feel worthless all the time, so just looking ahead is a validation of that but I still see failure. And I still feel nothing and no good. And I don't know when that goes away. I'm worried. So I called Jamie today to let her know that I'm coming out to stay with her for the rest of phase one. I fly out on the red eye tonight. Chickabee, Massachusetts right now, and, and I'm going to see Jamie. I'm kind of worried because it just didn't seem like she was in a very good place. Hooray. Oh, my god! Welcome to Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you. Oh, it's so good to see you. Oh. oh, my gosh. I mean, it's just been a few weeks since I saw her last, and wow. You know, it's possible to lose weight too fast. Well, now it's time for me to invade your life for a little while. Okay. So. This is intense. <sighs> All right, go ahead and step on the scale. Wow. Okay. 39 pounds now. You're ahead of schedule. Significantly ahead of schedule. Starting at 292 pounds, She's losing weight at the rate of someone who's 500 pounds. You've lost more than a pound a day in this first month, which is a little overkill. Now, I might slow things down a little bit, pull the reins back on your exercise, and I might have you eat a few more calories. Look, I don't you see doubt- my anxiety yes, rising. <laughs> I, 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 I totally see your anxiety rise right now. Just, it's okay. Go with this. Okay. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Right. There you go. Good, Jamie. Great job. I love this sprint. All right, how's your body feeling? Any aches and pains? I'm back, but... Is your back starting to... Is it starting to tighten up back here? Just tightening. Yeah, we're, we're done here. We can't risk it tightening okay. up on too much, all right? Okay. I totally get that she's driven to hit these numbers, but at the same time, all of a sudden, she starts telling me about her hip hurts, her back hurts. Take it down low. Beautiful, Jamie. Good job, good job, good job. My hips. Easy, 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 <laughs> easy, easy. Okay, I don't doubt her dedication. It's hurting her. If that's her mentality with exercise, what's her mentality like with nutrition? Before I even, before I got here, did you find yourself pulling back on the calories, over-exercising, starving yourself. I mean, were, were you there at all? I, I see you cringing. I definitely like, tried to hit my 1,200 calories in a day. I'm cringing because I know there's weeks where I was at 400. Okay. 400 calories a day? That's starvation level. I mean, she's destroying her body, and then she's working out eight hours a day on top of that? I, I hate to say it, but Jamie had healthier habits when she was obese. My job right now is gonna be getting you to eat as many calories as I can and keeping you out of the gym. If she keeps this up, she's gonna develop a full-blown eating disorder. It's gonna take a leap of faith. I won't ask you to do anything that will hurt you in the long run. Three, two, one, go! Good, Jamie, good hustle, good hustle, good hustle. Bring it back. Bring it home, here we go. Take it to that goal line. Good, Jamie. Big push, big push. Get underneath that tire. There you go. I feel excited about the way that Chris and I have sort of shifted and changed the workouts and changed some of the, the dietary things. There's peaches in here that are probably even better than the nectar beans. Oh, okay. Good, pick it up, lunge it back. I, I want dressing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> By all means. I have found myself focusing less on meeting that goal, whereas before I think the only thing I could have felt was fear and anxiety about meeting that goal, and now it's going to reflect my hard work no matter what. Good. Now bring your heart rate back down. Let's see how fast you can recover. Remember, fitness is not necessarily a gauge of how fast you can get your heart rate up. It's all a matter of how fast your heart rate comes back down. The faster you can recover, the fitter you're getting. Jamie got so fixated on the numbers. I want to make Jamie's focus all about fitness. 
I want her to think about push-ups and pull-ups and squats and running faster and jumping further. Look at that. It's coming down quickly. I just want to make sure that she's focusing on her health. Proof you've been hitting it hard right here. Look how fast you're recovering. I figured what, what better place for the 90-day weigh-in than right here. I'm so happy with, with the way that Jamie's been over the last few weeks. Unlike so many of the other times, when I, when I come into the 90-day weigh-in anticipating this big number, I don't care if she hits the number or not. Okay. I'm taking off my really Go heavy ahead and shoes. Take off your shoes, take off your shirt. Three months ago, you stepped on the scale, you weighed 292 pounds. And I gave you the goal to lose 80 pounds over the last 90 days. So if the scale says 212 pounds or less, pounds. And I gave you the goal to lose 80 pounds over the last 90 days. So if the scale says 212 pounds or less, you hit your goal. Are you ready? I'm ready. Go ahead and step on the scale. Let's do this. Two hundred eighteen pounds. So six pounds shy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that six pounds has ever felt so good. Like, I just, I lost 74 pounds. And Jamie from three months ago could never look at that number and feel successful. I would have felt like I failed you. And genuinely, today, I know I did it. The scale's going in the right direction. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, you're going in the right direction up here. The most encouraging thing about this weigh-in was that Jamie didn't mind that she didn't hit her goal. And, and to me, that's an even bigger victory than had she hit her goal in the first place. 74 pounds is not anything to stare at and be sad about. Jamie, well done. Thank you for everything. Coming up. So I finished the workout and I hurt my hip really bad tonight. And later. I can't tell you. I mean, first and foremost, thank you for sharing that. I had no idea. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, thank you, sir. Jamie got so fixated on the numbers in phase one that, I mean, it led to her eating 400 calories a day. She was practically starving herself. She was starving herself. So I wanted you to try something new in phase two. When it comes to a phase two goal, you know, a goal I would love for you to have is not a number goal. I think a performance goal would be phenomenal. I want to make Jamie's phase two focus all about fitness. What do you say in three months, you do a cross-training competition? Jamie's found a passion for CrossFit, which is it's gymnastics and it's powerlifting and it's Olympic weightlifting and it's endurance training, constantly varied and, and done at high intensity. Does fear and terror read in my eyes? Because that's what's bit, happening yes. right now. So for Jamie's milestone, she's going to compete in a CrossFit competition. And for anybody who knows, I mean, we're talking about some of the fittest people on earth. I will recommit right now to make sure that this next phase is about as much of losing weight and eating right as it is staying in balance and in check with myself. I want to see if that focus on fitness translates into weight loss. I don't know if it's going to work, but it's worth a try. You are reaching that place where you are so comfortable with yourself, and you just seem to have found the real gene. And I know you wanted to be in, in, a, in a good place <laughs> before you saw your mom. And to me, you certainly seem to be reaching that place. For your six-month weigh-in, I have one round trip ticket for you to go to Chile. And you can see your birth mom. Are you serious? I think you're pretty amazed balls right now. Chris Powell. I'm, I'm feeling really good about, about the place where Jamie is right now. I mean, yeah, there's part of me that's concerned about her getting overzealous and, and reaching for that number again. See ya. Bye. But at the same time, I just, I'm feeling good that, that she's gonna do well in phase two. This is my countdown to Chile. Phase two. Chile! 30 pound more day. This many days. Bethany! 
two days left to Chile. I, I wish that every adopted child were given the opportunity to say thank you to the people that brought them into this world because it really is a tremendous gift. Twenty-three days. Twenty-three days. Yeah. So I finished the workout and I hurt my hip really bad tonight. I'm like a mess. I'm sorry. Jamie's injured herself, so I got to go talk to Doctor Shack and just get his advice on on letting Jamie do this cross training competition that I set up for her, but. I just, I don't know if she can in her current condition. Hey, Dr. Shaq. Hi. How you doing? Good, good, good. Good, good to see ya. Yeah. So, okay. what's your problem for the day? Jamie, she hurt her hip, and I got this CrossFit competition set up for her. Mm -hmm. Only thing is that it's gonna require heavy squatting, weighted back lunges, a lot of movement around the hip, and I just, I mean, I don't want to make the problem worse. And uh, I think it could. You know, when we look at the hip joint itself and we realize that all the muscles that come around it, and when you're trying to get her to do squats, and this is having to turn huge directions, I think we're just aggravating a system that's going to make everybody frustrated and make no success. One of the ways we can go when that happens is to try to change possibly to a water-based system. Is there anything that you could do in the pool that you could do that takes some of the weight off those hips? I've got something good to do. Okay. All okay. right. Thanks, Doc. Bye -bye. visualize going to Chile. It never really completes. I get as far as deboarding and then it's like, and the rest of it's just gonna be amazing. We're going to be my mom. I was excited, I was nervous. As much as I had worked to not have to have everything be perfect, I secretly wanted everything to be perfect. Hello? Jamie. Hey, it's me. <gasps> Chris! I know that tomorrow is a really big day and you're, you're meeting with your mom. But first, I do have a challenge for you. <sighs> you see that in front of you? That's the world's largest pool. And you're gonna swim all the way across it. It's me. <gasps> Chris! I know that tomorrow is a really big day and you're, you're meeting with your mom. But first, I do have a challenge for you. <sighs> I know you hurt yourself and can't do the CrossFit competition. So instead, you see that in front of you? That's the Crystal Lagoon at San Alfonso del Mar. And that's the largest pool in the world. 1.2 miles. And guess what you're going to do? Are you speaking as if I'm going to swim this? <laughs> Is that how you're telling me the story's gonna go down? You're gonna swim all the way across it and run all the way back to the start. <sighs> all right. Now I'm gonna throw another curveball at you here. I'm thinking you should finish this whole challenge in less than an hour. Okay. Well, Jamie, good luck. Okay, bye. The most daunting part of the challenge was the time limit because I have been swimming at home every day and I know how long it takes me to swim that length. So I was sort of like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can even finish the swim in like less than half the time that he's giving me. is that you can't see the other side. So it's you're just swimming blindly. I relish the moments that are hard. I almost hear my old voice inside of me that's like, you can stop now because you've worked hard and it's okay. And then the, the new me is like, no, like I want to keep going. I've got to do this. So keep pushing through. After 
I finished the swim, I was excited to finish up with the run. I've definitely realized in phase two um, that I love short distance running. It's one of my favorite things to do. I think I'm pretty good at it. It's crazy to think about six months ago, like barely being able to, to sprint on a treadmill. Welcome to the next year of your life. Don't stop. And so to fast forward six months later, I was running fast, and I thought, I really am gonna crush my time. Maybe I have something inside of me that I never knew existed. I feel free knowing that things will get hard, that things won't always be easy, that life will throw you curveballs. Oh, that's amazing because on the other side of each of those new obstacles is either a success to relish in or a new challenge to face. Chris Powell, it's Jamie's balls. I just finished your challenge. It's done, it's over. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how fast Jamie finished that challenge. I mean, that was half the amount of time that I thought she'd finish it in. So, how do you feel? I feel, I feel like a warrior. I also feel like I could go again. I mean, I can't believe it. I just, I can't wait to see her when she gets back from Chile. Right, okay, sounds good. Bye. All right, bye now. the worst stomach ache of my life right now, and I don't know if that's because I'm so excited or because I'm so anxious. <sighs> Today is the day that I'm going to meet my birth mom and her daughter, Jasmine, and I did not get a lot of sleep last night. Santiago was surreal. There was this tremendous sense of feeling like I was home and also like sheer panic about what was gonna happen. I just couldn't wait, like just the bringing to fruition this dream, this dream of being able to say thank you, I think was sort of like an overwhelming sense of joy. I bet you're very anxious. Yeah, I am. I'm much. just here to help you. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Good. Tonight, in the first hour of extreme weight loss, Chris chose Jamie for the opportunity of a lifetime. Keep pushing. Come on now. How bad do you want to love yourself? To never worry about disappointing anybody. But she struggled to realize her self-worth. I still see failure, and I don't know when that goes away. And starved herself for results. I'm cringing because I know there's weeks where I was at 400. I, and I, I know. It and I... 400 calories a day? That's starvation level. After losing 74 pounds in the first 90 days, you're going in the right direction up here. Jamie finally began to value herself. Maybe I have something inside of me that I never knew existed. In the next hour... I want her to see the real me, not the perfect me. Jamie will realize her lifelong dream. God chose you to be my first mom. And make a stunning confession. Thank you for sharing that. I had no idea. Standing there waiting for my mom was the single most fear-inducing moment of my life. I'm not exactly where I want to be in my size, but I want her to see the real me, not the perfect me.
linda. <risa> Gracias. Y tú. <risa> Esperar tanto tiempo, tanto tiempo, tanto tiempo, tiempo, para este abrazo. El día antes de, o días antes que partiera, te dije, va a pasar mucho, mucho tiempo y nos vamos a volver a encontrar, nos vamos a volver a abrazar. Seeing my mom was better than my wildest dreams. It knew that she had never stopped loving me in the same way that I don't think I ever stopped loving her. I have wanted to meet you, to say thank you. It's not like a little thank you. It's like the biggest one in the world. You know, it was a hard decision to make. And I can't take away any of your sadness. But I love you. No fue. Fue pensando en que quería tenerte, quería que estuvieras conmigo, pero no podía darte lo que tú necesitabas ni Jem tampoco este. I feel like you gave me a piece of your heart. And I carried it with me my whole life. God chose you to be my first mom. Um, that feeling of this is a person that has loved me unconditionally. And I think maybe that's what I've been searching for my whole life is sort of a love that doesn't come from being perfect, a love that doesn't come from being thin and, and popular, a love that just comes because you are. Adelante. Please come in. Y si cierro nomás. Esta es la casa donde yo vivo. Esta es mi casa. But uh, actually, this is my dentro house. de la casa, este es este la casa. Within house? Yeah. It is my house. Oh, wonderful. Espacio pequeño. It's a small Pero space. Pero está, está completo con... But it's complete. It's perfect. This, this is your bed. ¿Esta es tu cama? Sí. And that's Jasmine's bed. Jasmine. Yo voy a ver la comida porque si no se nos van a... ¿Yo? It smells amazing. Her home was perfect. I don't know. Her home was... It was small. I mean, it was a small space. And I, it was such a showcase to me of, of how you can live so fully on so little. Mm. Very good. <laughs> Adelante. Ay, llegó la jazmín. ¿Cómo le fue? Hi! Mm, how are you? How are you? Bien. Getting to meet my sister was maybe the second biggest highlight of that trip. Like, she's just so cute and just, you call 11 year olds cool. Like, she just was really cool. Le gusta Justin Bieber. Do you like Justin Bieber? I do. I will totally say that on camera. Las mismas formas de los labios. I have something for you, and this one says, um, Sisters of the Heart, I love your hair. Okay, is that on really? Yeah. Yay! So there's two necklaces. Son dos collares. And you have one, and I will have one. They're both so you have to each other. I love it. Perfect. After lunch, my mom, Roxanne, wanted to show me where I was born. So we headed over to San Ramon, where I grew up. Cuatro o cinco cuadras aproximadas de la avenida donde vamos. So we must be like four to five blocks from where we are going to go. Hace muchos años que no han dado estos lugares. So I haven't been here for many, many years. 
y, y aunque parezca eh, raro, absurdo, es como un déjà vu. Even though it might seem absurd, this is like a déjà vu. Recuerdos eh, tristes. Very sad memories. This is the place now, okay? La cuadra donde caminamos muchas veces. This is the block that we walk uh, many times. A lo mejor no tantas como hubiese querido. May, probably not as many times as I wish they were. I think being in San Ramon and seeing where I grew up, like I've only ever had one image of Chile in my mind. I'm interested, like, if we like shared a bed. Sí, eh, siempre compartimos la cama porque siempre tuvimos una sola cama. Yeah, we always share yeah. the bed because yeah. we, we only had one bed. Right. Yo me imagino, no hubiese tomado esa decisión, eh, Jamie no sería Jamie y, y no sería agradable. Entonces ahora yo la veo a ella y eso me hace feliz. La decisión fue la correcta. Eh, dolorosa, pero fue la correcta. Este era el, el lugar donde aquí había This was a place. Había una casa. Everything was built up to here, and the rest was just empty. Where would I have slept and lived? ¿Dónde like, dormía yo? Part? ¿En qué parte estaba la, la pieza de ella? Ahí, donde no hay nada. Where there's, where there's nothing now. <laughs> right, right, no, that's crazy. No. I think that there, there was a moment when we were at the house, or the, the cement slab that we used to live on, and think about two-year-old Jamie, and I don't know that she ever was missing anything. We must have lived, you know, a very small life and not had certainly any sort of extras or opportunities, but I definitely was well taken care of and, and loved. I'm curious about, I, I was potty trained when I was adopted. Was I potty trained by her? Tiene curiosidad saber porque cuando ella fue adoptada, ella ya sabía usar la pelela, o sea, ella sabía. Sí, sí. Entonces tú le Gracias. You know, being too... Too, when I was adopted, it's hard to say whether or not any of the memories I have are real. I remember these streets. When I was a little girl, I used to have dreams about this and you. So thank you for bringing me back. Así que gracias por traerme. I've never thought like, oh, I don't have everything I need in my life in Massachusetts. I've definitely always felt like that was a tremendous gift. I think to see the living example of it sort of filled my heart to be like, this is where I started and this was the life that the, my first mother said, I want more for you. And so then to be able to think about the life that I lived with my moms has been incredible. This is what I can show you from here. I appreciate it. And I know it's not easy, so I'm thankful. Thank you. 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 Gracias a ti. No, this is not goodbye. No. Thank you. Yeah. Este no es un adiós. No. No va a ser un adiós. No, it's not going to be a goodbye. Creo que nunca se cortó el cordón. I think we never cut really the cord. The greatest gift that I could give to her was sort of feeling I was at my best and sort of ready to take in the entire experience of Chile and just enjoy every moment with her without being worried that I was going to disappoint her was awesome. Cuídese, cuídese, cuídese. Take care, oh. take care, take care. Luego. Solo luego. See you soon then. Y tú?
No, goodbye. Goodbye. See you soon. In meeting her, I, I felt like I just got to understand more of who she was. I think that day put into perspective this idea that I've been given this incredible gift by a, a pretty selfless woman. Champ, welcome to Arizona. Hey. <laughs> oh. Instead of Jamie flying from Chile back to Massachusetts, I redirected her flight so that she can come to Arizona and we could spend some time together. So tell me about how was Chile? How was it? How was it seeing your mom? It was better than my wildest dreams. She's very proud of me, and I think she's really, really cool. I am so proud of you. Thanks. And you look incredible. I feel incredible. That's the best part. God. So. I mean, I haven't seen her in, in months, and I can see that this fitness goal is paying off. This is totally an experiment for me. So I, I'm, I'm excited to see how that translates into the numbers on the scale. All right, go ahead and step on the scale. As a matter of fact, you are in the hundreds, yes. <laughs> Giving Jamie a fitness goal instead of a weight loss goal, it worked. And she's so much happier. I mean, I mean it's it's not a huge number, but, but the scale's going in the right direction. I still have to show you my push-up. How about right now? Right now? Show me the push-up. Right I want to see it. Show me what you got. Wow. Nice, Jamie. Beautiful. <laughs> Yes! Jamie, at one point, just six months ago, she was super obese. And now she's doing push-ups from her toes. I mean, it's, it's incredible to see how far she's come, how fit she is now. I was thinking, you know what? Heidi and I are gonna be working out later on today. Why don't you work out with us? I would love that. This is a big moment. I mean, it's rare for a client to actually work out with Heidi and me. Jamie's so fit, she's ready to make that leap from being a client to being your workout partner. Come on, James, get up there. There you go, one more, one more, one more. Working out with Chris and Heidi was sort of like, number one, I couldn't believe he invited me to work out with them. Finish it, get up there, Jamie. Oh. Yeah. Woo. How you doing, Jamie? Good. Good, keep it up. And then to be doing really difficult exercises was awesome. How much you've grown emotionally is just, it's amazing. I know that six months ago, you were in a really dark place. Yeah. A really dark place. You know, six months ago, I think a lot of people were worried about me and trying to figure out what was wrong. And I know that there was a lot of like, I should have been just really excited when you were surprising me. But there was a part of me that was sort of like, just I felt really unworthy of being chosen. And I felt unworthy because I hated myself so much, so much that I just wanted to die. And that night, if you hadn't shown up, like, I was just gonna do it. I was so ready to be done with living. And you walking into my life at that moment screwed all of that up. How serious were you about it? <laughs> like, I, no, I had no idea. I just thought you wanted help. Six months ago, you and I had a pretty crazy fight or flight workout, and I had, um, I had like my bottles of pills and I was just, I was just waiting for cameras to leave and I could just go back to my room and be done. I just wanted to be done. How are you feeling? You don't look too comfortable right now. <laughs> I'm not. I am so afraid of disappointing you and myself right now. And so I'm psyching myself out for that. At that moment, I was so close to just being like, I have pills in my room and I would like to go back and take them and I'm worthless and no one should invest their time in me. I was so afraid of letting you down. You know, I picked the second truest thing to tell him, which was that I was afraid of disappointing him, which isn't a lie, but it's definitely not why I was crying in the beginning. So you had a plan. Yeah. For Jamie, she wasn't just thinking about it. She was committed to following through with her suicide. 
and it's it's almost haunting looking back. I came all the way out here for you. Why? I was like, what are you doing here? I don't know. I wanted to know why me. When I picked her, I interfered with her plan. What stopped you from doing it? I mean, I think there was a, a moment where I had two bottles of pills and no voice inside of me. Nothing to say, like, you can do this. But I had your voice, and underneath was a very small Jamie voice, a very little girl who just wanted the opportunity to try. So I can't thank you enough for that, to sort of pull out that small little voice inside of me that knows that I am worth something, and every day I can, like, build that self-worth. And I don't ever want to put myself in that position again where I can't get help if I need it. It's moments like this that I realize that this is so much more than just a weight loss show. This is people's lives. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad that it worked out the way it did. I can't tell you. I mean, first and foremost, thank you for sharing that. I had no idea. I'm so glad you're here now. I'm glad I'm here, too. Thank you for being you. Thank you for showing up in my life in a green leotard. that there are new opportunities to build a stronger relationship with my adoptive mom. It's been good having you back. Yeah, sort of. I'm never home. No, I know. I think we are sort of at the beginning of starting to build a stronger bond than we've ever had because my expectations have changed. You feel hungry? Mm, I'm ready for reward day. OK. So I think I'm going to get some salmon. Good for you. I wish I could like salmon. I've tried since you've been keeping it in my house. I can't, I don't like it. Phase two has made me realize that I will be waiting forever for her to be the kind of parent that I wanted her to be, but I can love her right now just the way that she is. What's brioche? Is that a cheese? I don't know. It's too classy for us. It's a restaurant. <laughs> I think I've been waiting 27 years for my life to begin. And my life has been waiting kind of in the same place, like, okay, we're, we're ready when you are. <laughs> um, so I'm ready. I'm ready for my life to begin. You tried. Jamie needs to lose at least 40% of her original body weight if she wants to qualify for the skin removal surgery at the nine-month weigh-in. Let's take a look at your teeth while we're talking about this. I'm going to meet with Dr. Bonalato, who is a dentist. It's always been my dream to have my teeth whitened, so. Hey! I'm ready to just take on, chip away at these challenges as they come, and maybe I won't be 146 pounds when I weigh in, but I will be Jamae's balls at 188. I will be Jamae's balls at 175, and my success will not be tied to numbers. You have to be ready when you start a journey to finish what you start. Finish with sir. Make three dance. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. That just happened. Coming up. I might be the craziest person in Philadelphia for what I'm about to do, but I'm doing this final way in in a bikini. <laughs> Today's Jamie's nine month lane. And I mean, last time I saw her, she seemed to be in a great place. And so I, I can't wait to see her today. Look at you. Hello. You look great. I think nine months ago, I didn't even want to be chosen by Chris because I felt so unworthy. And now I definitely feel worthy of this experience. You ready to do this? I'm so ready. 
You know, the thing about Jamie is that I haven't given her a weight loss goal since phase one. And so today, I just want to see what her focus on fitness has translated to when it comes to a number on the scale. Three months ago, you stepped on the scale, you were 192 pounds. You'd lost 100 pounds exactly. I didn't give you a weight goal. I just said, keep getting fitter. And let's see where we end up. And here we are today. You know, we're not, we're not focusing on numbers at all, mm -hmm. but you know, in order for me to take you in to go see Dr. Stoker to get that skin removed, okay. he has requirements. I mean, he wants to see you lose at least between 40 to 50% of your original body weight just to be a candidate. So if you're 175 pounds or less, you hit your goal. Go ahead and step on the scale. Okay. I know how hard I've worked over the last nine months. There isn't a doubt in my mind about the integrity of my working out and eating healthy. And so I know I've done everything I possibly can to get my body ready for skin removal surgery and it would be a tremendous reward. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Great job. Great what? job. Check out the percentage. 39.38%. That's what you lost. It's overwhelming. It's, yeah. it's like in a good way, it's really overwhelming. Losing 115 pounds in nine months is a little surreal. It's a little bit like I didn't know that I had that much power in me. But now, let's think about the skin. It's gonna be in Dr. Stoker's hands. And usually, he won't consider somebody a candidate unless they lose between 40 to 50 percent of their original body weight. Mm -hmm. But I'm blown away at, at how much muscle you've developed. I mean, the, the guns came from somewhere. That's what I'm talking about, and this right here. I know, that wow. guy's... Right? Yes. I want him to see what I see. So we're still going to take you in there tomorrow, awesome. and, and let's just get his opinion. My biggest worry is have I done enough to warrant skin removal surgery? I think, like, I look at my stomach and I still feel and see a 290 pound girl. Jamie, nice to see you again. Congratulations on your progress. Jamie's lost well over 100 pounds. And I'm really hoping that Dr. Stoker can take into account the fact that she's developed a lot of muscle when it comes to her qualifying for skin removal surgery. What I see here, this is actually uh, quite thin, okay. which is what I look for. It's not nearly as thick as I thought it might be. What I also feel is on your abdomen, it feels pretty darn strong. And that must be the core workout that you're doing. So um, that's a positive thing for you as well. But it's a tough decision deciding, you know, whether or not you're really a candidate for surgery um, at this point. I went in sort of readying my heart for it to be like a, hey kid, you worked really hard, but it's not gonna work out here. The great news for you is that I think you are a candidate for surgery. Yay! <laughs> Breath, my Jamie, you had a particularly large amount of muscle. That muscle affects things such as our BMI calculation. It really has a powerful influence on what I see for the operation. That's insane. Yeah, congrats. That's insane. Come here. I was really surprised when I qualified for skin removal surgery. I'm stinking proud of myself and how hard I've worked to get here. I'm so ready. Bring it on. Knock. Hey! Hey, champ. So this morning, Jamie's getting checked in for surgery. And it's so cool because her aunt is actually there with her, and her aunt's a registered nurse. So I know that she's going to be in great hands during her recovery. Hey, before the doctor comes in, there's something I want to show you really quick. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> yeah. I had a little surprise for Jamie, somebody that, that wanted to congratulate her on such a phenomenal transformation. Hi, Jamie. It's me, Mommy Dearest. I just wanted to surprise you with this little video, and I'm thinking about you, and I'm, I wrote you a letter, and I'm gonna read it to you. Dear Jamie, good luck with your surgery. And I'll be thinking about you every single minute, and that's the truth. I just want you to know how proud I am of you, Jamie. I'm sending you a big hug right now. And here's one from Grandma. I just want you to know that 
Adopting you was the best thing that I ever did in my life. I love And you are loved. Yes. Yes, yeah, I know. Jamie and her adopted mom, Lynn, they're still working on the relationship. But at the same time, it's so clear that Lynn, she loves Jamie. And it's also clear that Jamie's beginning to accept Lynn for who she is. Hi, Hi. Dr. Stoker. Jamie, are you ready for me? I'm so ready. <laughs> if I could say one thing to myself from nine months ago, I would say, you are so much more powerful than you give yourself credit for. And if you wield that power, then people are going to want to be around you all of the time, and you are going to surprise yourself every day. Feeling good? <sighs> yeah, I am. I feel calm and ready. Rocky wasn't messing around, man. Jeez, that's no joke. So how are you guys doing tonight? Yeah. Are you ready to see Jamie? When you see the new Jamie, you're going to be blown away. And she's on her way here right now. Yeah. She was in such a dark place when I first met her, and it wasn't till until later that I found out that Jamie actually had, um, she had a secret, and she had actually planned to take her own life. And actually, when, when I had chosen her, she told me that she was upset because I had ruined her plan. Knowing Jamie now, and seeing how much she's changed and how much she's realized about herself, I'm so glad I ruined that plan. <laughs> I mean, what, what a crazy ride it's been. I mean, this is what Jamie used to look like. You guys ready to see Jamie today? Yeah. All right. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the new Jamie. Well, this was Jamie just one year ago. And boy, does she look different now. You guys ready to see the new Jamie? Yeah! Her whole life, seen her look so happy and glowing and beautiful like that. She was so happy. It, it was, it was amazing. A lot can happen in a year, huh? Yeah. So how do you feel? I feel amazing. I do. <laughs> I right. I feel. If you had said to me a year ago that this is how far I could come in my life, emotionally, spiritually, and physically. I don't know that I would have believed you, and sort of the journey that I've been on has been one of tremendous growth. So to be standing here 
in this body and in this mind frame is something that I never dreamed was possible. You have changed so much over the last year. Just thinking back to the very first week that we spent together, you couldn't even look in the mirror. Yeah. I mean, do you remember this person here? There she is. Oh, yeah. Can you look ahead? Do you need me to? Like, I feel worthless all the time, so just looking ahead is a validation of that. Like, I already know I'm ugly, so I don't want to look at something that I know is disgusting. I mean, I remember that so vividly. Who lives like that? Like, who lives in such pain? Yeah. Not anymore. Not anymore. And never again. Never, ever again. I know who that person was. They were really sad, and they certainly felt like the world would be a much better place without me in it. And I also know that um, this year was meant to happen to sort of open up my eyes to the fact that maybe I had been waiting for 29 years for my life to begin and the truth was it was always there for the living. I just needed to like come out of that place and know that I had people that were willing to be there for me this whole time. And you did. <laughs> we're all here for you. And your mothers. Yes. They're here. I think that this year was a lot of discovering that I was more loved than I ever knew, and this is such a testament to that. It's true, as much as this is a celebration of me tonight, it's also an opportunity for me to say thank you to everyone who has supported me and believed in me long before I could do that for myself. So thank you very much. Well, it is at the end of your one year of transformation. And I brought Baby Blue. I know. <laughs> you recognize? Love her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, Jamie. For the last time this year, get ready to step on the scale. All right. I might be the craziest person in Philadelphia for what I'm about to do. But that person was so afraid of her body and 365 days later, it's not perfect. And there are still stretch marks everywhere. But I'm doing this final weigh-in in a bikini. So will you help me take this dress off? My pleasure. Transformation right there. Wow! Incredible. Incredible. So, when you started this year, you were 292 pounds. Been a crazy 365 days. Well, Miss Jamie, whenever you are ready, yes. step on the scale. I would love to. <laughs> We can come back from that, right? How bad do you want to love yourself? To never worry about disappointing anybody? More than anything in this world, I want Roxanna, my biological mother, to be able to wrap her arms all the way around me. Jamie, whenever you are ready, yes. step on the scale. I would love to.
Incredible. Incredible. I never thought that I could get there in one year. It's amazing. Absolutely incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, the new Jamie. The new Jamie. You weigh 162 pounds now. I mean, you lost 130 pounds. I gotta let you guys know also, she increased her muscle mass by 30%. That's phenomenal. Yeah. I feel light as a feather, and I feel like I can take on the world. So what's the next step? I mean, what, what can't you do? <laughs> you know, I think for me, there's so many years of I can't. There's been 28 years of I will never be able to do that. I could never try that. And there's only been 365 short days of maybe if I just give it a try. And so the world is my oyster. There's so many things that I want to do. And every day is a new I can. Or even if I can't, I can try. So that's what the next rest of my life looks like. Yes. I've been touched by, by your passion for learning and growing, and I'm not the only person who's been touched. I've got something for you. This is from our friends at Walmart, who want to help you continue to live better. So they want to give you this, to help you pursue your ultimate goal, which is your PhD in education. So they want to give you the latest and greatest in laptop technology. This is incredible. And now, of course, you're going to need this too, this is a gift card for $25,000 to Walmart. Yes. For everything that you need. You know, they, they want to help you continue to live better. This is not real life. Yes, right now. it is. This yes. Is unreal. To me, going back to school is something that I couldn't fathom a year ago. So at the end of this year, I'm being so ready to tackle the next chapter in my life. Right. Walmart's been supporting us since the beginning. and. I don't even know how to say, begin to say thank you for a gift like this. Jamie, tonight's your night. Yes. You know, I think a lot about starting the year in the place that I was. I didn't want to do this life anymore. I didn't want to do living with feeling like a failure. I think when you live in a worthless world, it's like there's nothing, there's nothing to live for. You know, it felt like this really tight, suffocating room. And then somebody came and opened the door. You know, just a little bit. I can't tell you how, I mean, how happy I am that you're here with me today. Boy, am I glad I chose you. Yeah. I think it's safe to say I wouldn't be here without this opportunity. And I'm so grateful. I really am. Tapping is a simple and powerful healing modality that Tapping is a simple and powerful healing modality.